Matt here from The Random Maker, and today we are gonna show you how to take that sawdust in the air and in the floor and drop it in a bucket in a cost-effective manner. Doesn't that sound like a really good idea for any beginner woodwork? So how about this? Let's get on with the video. You're probably wondering, why would you be going doing this? If I have a shop back, can't I just hook it up to the machines and it'll suck up all the sawdust? The problem is that fine dust and stuff, you can put filters in and there's all that, but eventually that fine sawdust and stuff, it starts to clog the system and all that. So the whole point of this is that you're just using the motor to suck the air and drop all the sawdust and everything in the bucket, keeping some distance from your shop back, even though still check the filters and all that because it's not gonna get 100% fine particles that are gonna be there. But it is going to keep the heavier stuff in here and hopefully a lot of the fine. We're gonna find out, I've seen these online, I've never had one myself, so I'm gonna learn here. I've just relied on an air scrubber in the ceiling and a good old broom, but I'm sick of sweeping stuff up, especially after the last couple projects. So how about this? Let's get going. Okay, so, Let's get started, move the bucket out of the way. Now, the first two things you're gonna need, and I guess we can just put this back here because we don't even need that right now, and here's why. So, how this most of the systems are gonna work is they're gonna have your vortex, whatever, and then they're gonna have a gasket. Now, the gasket, as you can see, fits perfectly on there. So instead of me trying to trace this and make, make it all difficult, I'm gonna put this right back here, nice and safe. I kinda don't like the word they use airtight because even, you don't need to be super fancy, but a bucket with a lid airtight enough for these systems, First things first, the lids I have here, it has a lip. And when I measured it, the lips kind of line up with these holes. Now, if you're a real perfectionist, you can measure perfectly here. To be fair for me, what I'm going to do is I am just going to, by having that lip there, I'm gonna line up. If you can, if you can't really see very well, but that circle I kind of drew on with the edge of the lid, I can see the marker through the holes on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up so it looks pretty, okay? Now, some people are like, well, get it perfectly lined up and all this, and I'm like, yeah, it'll probably look a little better. For me, I'm eyeballing this because it's a vacuum system. It is a shop bass lid, and also I've got bigger projects for this later. I just wanna get this running and see how it works before my next idea comes to life here. What I'm gonna do here is now that I have my gasket roughly where I want it, I'm gonna put my hands down Double check the lines are still good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna draw where each hole is. And I'm also gonna draw this inside circle. And if you notice, when I'm moving my hand around, I never let go until the previous hand is locked in place because I don't want this to move. And I'm just gonna draw circles. And I don't really like where these circles are, but it's gonna work. Now. Once you have that, what we can see here is our drill holes and that inner circle. Now, I am gonna drill the holes first for a bunch of reasons. Number one, if I cut this circle out, there's less plastic and I think it's gonna be not as rigid and it's gonna be harder to drill the holes. The nice thing with these, very simple, because it's rigid and the holes don't need to be absolutely perfect, I'm just gonna take the soft plastic, put the drill in and slowly, boom. And I was a little worried at first that the holes because it's on this edge, might be a little harder to drill. Just make sure your hands are out of the way and just go nice and slow with plastic because you don't want it spinning. And that's about it. It's not that hard. We have holes that line up perfectly with this gasket. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Not the most perfect hole, but to be fair, we're just getting stuff to drop in there. The next thing is we have to attach the Vortex Cyclone Century vacuum system on. If I can line everything up nicely, so once you get one on, it gets easier, is I'm gonna just grab this right here, lined up with the gasket and my thumb underneath, and then I'm gonna put a nut and a bolt. And what that's gonna do is grab more plastic so we can actually line it up. And I'm not gonna put it on too hard right now for one very simple reason, because I need to line up other of the holes. What you wanna do before you tighten anything, and this is a rule with pretty much everything, is don't tighten all the bolts until everything's lined up because even if you have done it 
very nicely. You can still, you need a little wiggle room sometimes. And so we need to place all of these before I even crank one down. And that way we'll get a nice happy fit. Now that we have all of our bolts, basically just roughly tight, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on here and I'm gonna tighten these up. Now, this is plastic, we're not gonna crank it. All, you can see the foam sucking in and that is all I'm looking for. That's it, that is how hard these systems are to install. Now, one of the big problems with this is you have to have a second hose because you have to attach your vacuum on the top here and then you have to have what you're vacuuming with. And so for me, my an old shop back of mine blew up and that was why I got the new one. That's why I got this. So we don't blow up the second one. So I kept the attachments. The attachments fit on this. So kind of worked out nicely for me. That might not always be the case. The company I'm using here sells, of course, every accessory you could ever need as long as you pull out your credit card. But for me, I'm going to scavenge and use what I have. So let's put this onto the bucket, attach a vacuum, and I'm going to show you why this is so valuable. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how well this can work. So I just kind of tap the filter out outside, empty vacuum, empty bucket. I'm going to set this up and we're going to vacuum some dust and then I'll open it up again and we'll see how well this works and why this is such a easy cost effective way to do sawdust control and yeah, it works well. And right here, Right there are your results. As you can see right here, the vacuum. Well, there's a tiny bit of fine, fine dust, I would say. A 99.9% .9 of all of the sawdust dumped in there, which is why we want this. And what this does is it puts less pressure on the vacuum because there's less particles hitting the filter, clogging it. Well, there you go. A super simple dust control, dust collection system. Actually, after this video, I'm going to go on a vacuuming spree with this. And yeah, really simple, really easy, cost-effective way for, for beginner woodworkers or anybody who needs that control. Well, if you like the video, why don't you do us a favor, hit the like button. If you wanna watch more content from The Random Maker, hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, put it in the below and we'll probably, and we're look always looking for new projects, whether it's woodworking, metalworking, 3D printing, whatever you want to pick, we can do it. Okay. Well, how do I like to edit every, any video just like this? This is Matt from The Random Maker and until next time, let's get making.